I've never had sex with a man. <laughs> Yet. But if I did, he'd have to be bigger than me. Not because he'd have to hold me down. This is a consensual, uh, hypothetical deal. Here, here's why, because I'd want to feel safe, you know? Uh, okay, all the girls know what I'm talking about. You like a man that makes you feel safe. My, I know, because my girlfriend, she does that to me every night when we go to bed, dude. She, she lays on my shoulder and she goes, I feel so safe, right? And, uh, and in my head, I'm like, you shouldn't. If a bunch of ninjas come in here right now, there's not really anything I can do about it. Like, you're laying on my good arm. I don't know karate. I'm just... I feel safe because I'm going to throw you at the ninjas. That's not a nice thing to say to your lady. I'm gonna throw you at ninjas. I never had sex with a man, but I would never judge anybody's sexuality at all, because I think everyone's confused a little bit sexually. I do. What I mean by that is I hope everybody in here has had an interesting enough life, okay, that at some point, somebody did something to you in bed, right, where you were like, Do it again, right? That's, that's how I feel. I hope you all are like that. <laughs> I hope. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm dating a girl my age. She's 37, right? And I don't, I don't mess around with young girls, but if I wanted to, boy, with the knowledge I have now, it'd be so easy. <laughs> young girls, they respond to confidence. It's like this, like a Pavlov's dog thing. Like, see, when I was a young kid, I wasn't confident, so I could never hook up. But now that I'm older, like, you talk to a young girl and you try to get her to go home with you, you just go like, hey, you know what? Why don't you come home with me right now? Come on, let's go. And she'll be like, I can't. Oh my God, are you serious? I can't. That is crazy talk. You are crazy. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah, I'm dead serious. I want you to get in my car and come home with me right now. Come on, let's go. We got a nice place. I'm 37, I clean. <laughs> She'll be like, I can't. I swear to God, I have to work tomorrow. I cannot go home with you. I swear to God. Hey, what's work, right? We met each other. We hit it off. Let's go. Come on. Come on. And she'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then the next morning, she's like, how am I going to get to work? And I'm like, I don't know. That's your issue. You got yourself into this situation. This is a teachable moment. <laughs> I'm getting, I don't do stuff like that though. I'm getting like to that age where I just feel, I feel creepy, you know? Like, I can't sleep with somebody the same age as my niece, you know? It's like, yeah, exactly. That's how I feel inside and after. <laughs> I'm at that age when when you have a birthday, everybody cheers you up. It's your birthday, you're supposed to be happy anyway. And they're like, why are you so sad, birthday boy? Why are you sad, birthday boy? Right? And I'm like, because my dreams are dead. And then... <laughs> valid. And they're like, what do you mean your dreams are dead? No, they're not. You can still achieve them. Age is just a number. 
Right? I know, right? I'm like, you're right, it is. Oh my gosh, that's a genius statement. Wow, thank you for that knowledge. That's science. Age is just a number. And if you look at it like that, then do you know what death is? It's just letters. <laughs> Who cares? That's not a tumor in your head, it's a noun. Last week while you were at work, I went over to your house and verbed your wife. Okay, anyway. <laughs> The point being, <laughs> get some of the young kids are googling that joke, trying to figure it out. Like, what? <laughs> if you are a young kid right here, if you're in school right now, okay, like college or high school, and you're in this room, you are, and you're not getting good grades, and you have Google at your disposal, you should probably just quit, because you don't care. You don't care. If you can't get good grades with Google, make room for a Hindu who cares and has a family somewhere in a third world country they have to feed, okay? You're just an arrogant white person. Cause you know, I mean, Google, dude, you have a box on your computer that will answer any question ever, pretty much, and you can't even pull a B, you know? Like, seriously? You don't even have to type in what you wanted Google to find for Google to find what you wanted Google to find. <laughs> have you ever typed in something totally wrong and then Google's like, oh, what did you mean? And you're like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Are you in my house, Google? Why did you know that? All the young kids now, they're all, in, they're all on Facebook. They're all like, I have 400 friends. No, you don't. <laughs> the human heart can't care about 400 people, dude. I don't care about half my family, okay? Honestly. <laughs> Let's be real, 400 people, and you go, what's your relationship like with them? And they're like, well, once a day, they write down some mundane, banal statement that's of little cosmic interest to anyone ever. And I, I go, I like that. <laughs> oh my god, we're so close. No wonder I let him look at pictures of me in my bikini on vacation. Of course, why wouldn't I do that? And every girl here tonight, you abuse Facebook. You abuse it. You're all gonna put up a photo album that says like, Ice House, Good Times, 2011, tonight. I swear to god. Why? Just because you had a cocktail? Like, that really? You gotta put up a photo album for that, ladies? Every, every single time you go out. It's, you know what I'm talking, you go like, this picture right here, oh my gosh, oh. And they're pointing at it, like, so you know there's alcohol in there. Like, I get it, oh, oh, oh. oh look what I did. <laughs> or they get saucy, they're taking a sip. Oh, what's, what mayhem will ensue? Right? And then nothing, you didn't even get drunk enough to make out. Come on, man. Guys would never do that, would we gentlemen? Would you bring out a camera when you were partying with your guy friends? No, because that's not a memory, that's evidence. <laughs> your bottom will wind up in the trunk. Have fun tagging a picture of the tire iron. <laughs> All right, let's close on something completely stronger than that. Mm. Oh, no. I, uh... I am on, uh, I don't know, man. I got, uh, I got kids, I got stepkids. Anybody here got stepkids? I'm trying to be like the best father in the world too. And I think, I think I am like, I honestly, I really, really, really try to be the best father to everybody in my family. And with stepkids, you try extra hard because you don't want them to be messed up, right? You know, raising kids is hard work. Like you, the more you raise kids, the more you realize there's a reason most people are useless. It's because their parents just quit at one point. Their parents were just like, I can't, you know what, be what you're gonna be because you're driving me insane. And I want to smoke a joint and watch the Lakers. Right? <laughs> Pretty much, that's why most people are idiots. Cause at one point their parents just went, oh, I'm out. <laughs> and I'm not at that point, man. I'm still, I'm burnt down, I'm just, uh, you know? And it, step kids, they're mean to you. That's the problem. Like you give, when you're a father, you just give and give and give. And then you don't get, not only do you not get anything back a lot of times, is step kids say stuff that hurt you. Like at the end of the day, for no reason, I'm like, hey buddy, go brush your teeth. Okay, love you. And he's like, whatever, you're not my real dad! <laughs> ah! I know, 
so you got you just can't take it personal. You gotta know how to talk to him. I'm like, you know what, buddy, you're right. I'm not your real dad, and that's why I don't care about you at all. I will bury you in the garden. Do you understand that? I'm here to do two things, eat your food and bang your mom, all right? I go to bed, I gotta read my real kid's story. You guys have been great, thank you very much.